so guys let's start today's session this is the first question and a very important question from your examination perspective from your examination point of view prove that the product of any three consecutive positive integers is divisible by six this is a very common question but in this session i will even tell you how to write the steps and i am assuming all these questions if it would come in four marks question now let me tell you if any of the question in the sessions comes for three marks say for example in your examination then what you will do you will simply cut down the steps which is not required or which would be irrelevant according to that four uh, three marks question so i'll be even telling you so according to a four marker question that if this question comes in a four marks question which should be so the solution would be like this now how we got we are going to solve this question so i'll tell you the very first step would be let three consecutive positive integers be n n plus one and n plus two this is the very common thing which you assume that these three consecutive integers we will assume at n n plus one and n plus two let me tell you consecutive integers means ek ke baad ek, just one after another so when a number is divisible by three divided by three the remainder can be zero one or two we know this Euclid theorem that the remainder can never be more than the divisor. So if I am dividing any number by 3, the remainder would always be either 0 or 1 or 2. So using this thing, I can write down that n, this n number which I had assumed here, this n can be of the form 3p, multiple of 3, divisible by 3 or 3p plus 1. If it is having a remainder 1, it will have 3p plus 1. Or if ha it has a remainder of 2, so it will be a 3p plus 2. Okay, I guess you all would be understanding it. And please follow it that these steps are very important. You should write these steps in your examination for getting the cent percent marks. And I will even tell you how I have streamlined these questions and why I have kept these questions for you guys and how important they are. I'll be telling you in this session only. Now, so if n is equal to 3p, say for example, n can be 3p or 3p plus 1 or 3p plus 2. So I have taken the first value n. If n is equal to 3p, then n is divisible by 3. That is very sure. Yes, that is possibility. But if n is not equal to 3p, then n will be equal to 3p plus 1. Second possibility, 3p plus 1. So if n is equal to 3p plus 1, this employs out of these numbers, n, n plus 1 and n plus 2. The third number n plus 2 if I am putting the value of 3p plus 1 here, 3p plus 1 plus 2, 3p plus 1 plus 2, it will come as 3p plus 3. And here we are getting again 3 as common. So out of these numbers, n, n plus 1 and n plus 2, this third number n plus 2 is divisible by 3. So is divisible by 3. I have written that this is divisible by 3. Now moving on to next. Say for example, if n is not even 3p p plus 1, so it will be 3p plus 2. So if n is equal to 3p plus 2, n plus 1 the second number n plus 1 n plus 1 would be 3p plus 2 plus 1 that is again 3p plus 3 and is equal to 3p plus 1 isn't it guys so if this is again divisible by 3 now what i have made you understand that in each and every case either n or n plus 1 or n plus 2 is divisible by 3 so that we had to show so in all the cases so we can say that one of the numbers among n n plus 1 and n plus 2 is always divisible by 3 so that is why their product that is n into n plus 1 into n plus 2 the multiplication of these numbers will always be divisible by 3 you should write down the last step that n into n plus 1 into n plus 2 product of three consecutive integers will always be divisible by 3 now you know why i have taken three because we have to show the divisibility by six okay so six has two prime factors two and three so you have to show the divisibility by three and by two now i have taken the harder one the tougher one in the first time for the for the <coughs> easier one that is two similarly we will prove uh, when a number is divided divided by two the remainder obtained is zero or one now you know if the same question comes in a three marker question say for example three it won't come in two marker but if it comes in three marker from here onwards you can directly write that n into n plus one into n plus two is also divisible by three and then hence proved for a three marker question but if this question goes on for the four marks you will move on with the next step n is divisible by two so it will have n equal to 2q or 2q plus one 
because if uh, we are dividing it by 2 remainder will be 0 or 1 so n is equal to 2q or 2q plus 1 where q is some integer okay if n is equal to 2q similarly n plus uh, n is equal to 2q then n and n plus 2 the first number and the last number n plus 2 both will be divisible by 2 isn't it and similarly if n is equal to 2q plus 1 because this is also a possibility second number n equal to 2q plus 1 so if the 2q plus 1 is there then surely n plus 1 the second number n plus 1 that was the second number so n plus 1 would be that 2q plus 1 plus 1 that is 2q plus 2 again here 2 is common and it will be divisible by 2 so i can write it down that so we can say that the number among n n plus 1 and n plus 2 all three are divisible by two either in the first case or in the second case so the product any one of them at least n or n plus one or n plus two any one of them is divisible by three so their product will always be divisible by two so if their product is always divisible by two then we can very well say that that in the first case n into n plus 1 into n plus 2 was divisible by 3 and in the second case it is divisible by 2. So we can write down that hence n into n plus 1 into n plus 2 is divisible by 2 and 3 both. That is why we can say that it is divisible by 6. So this will be a complete step for a 4 marker question. Let me tell you board needs steps and those steps should be very much correct. So that is why I am giving you a detailed solution that how you should write it in your board examinations because that is important i know you many of you must be knowing the answer of this question and this might be an easy question but right now i am not here to show my talent that how much i know i'm not even here to give you something very extraordinary knowledge no we are here only with one motive that we all have to score above 95 percent marks in our board examination and i can take the guarantee of mathematics that if you are going to follow this, surely, surely I am damn sure that you are going to score above 95 marks. Because all those seven questions which I have taken in the session, I have designed all those seven questions keeping in mind that if the board will ask at least one, I am taking it, I am giving you it in writing. You can write down here that me, Harsh Priyam has said these words on 21st of January, 6 p.m. That at least one question out of these every chapter session at least one question will come in the board's examination that is my dead sure guarantee to all of you so write it down and that is why i'm very sure that if you follow this you will get above 95 so come on guys follow these steps this question is very important it is most likely to come in this examination so read it very carefully moving on to our next question i guess you all would have understood this question it was a pretty easy question steps are important so i would recommend that keep on getting the steps also so that you can write it in your examination moving on to our next so this will be our next question show that root 3 plus root 5 is an irrational number you would have seen this question multiple times isn't it so root 3 plus root 5 is an irrational number see this proving root 5 is an irrational number can also come but it is an easier question so if this question is coming i am assuming that you people would be able to solve this because this was the same question of class 9th also so this year board can ask a bit different one not a tougher one but a different one so root 3 plus root 5 whole square is an irrational number that has to be proved so how are you are going to prove this let's see so the first step <coughs> sorry uh, avoid this the first step would be let root 3 plus root 5 whole square be a rational number this would be the first step now now we'll square it using the formula of a square plus b square so a plus b whole square a square plus 2 a b plus b square equal to p by q now this will be 3 and this will be 5 so 3 plus 5 8 and plus 2 root 3 into root 5 would be root 15 is equal to p by q 9 now let me tell you why i have assumed this p by q you all must be knowing that we have assumed it rational and rational is always of the form p upon q so that is why we have assumed it as p upon q now so the next step would be 8 plus 2 root 15 and in the next step this 8 would go to this side that is what i have written 2 root 15 remaining here and p by q minus 8 and then when i'll take the lcm this q will go to this side p minus 8 q divided by q this will be the solution and in the next step i have sent this 2 to the denominator that is root 15 is equal to p minus 8 q divided by 2 q so i guess you all would be clear till here now moving on to a next step 
here you will write just simply that here p q minus 8 and 2 all are rational numbers so rational into rational rational divided by rational rational plus rational rational minus rational all operations on rational numbers gives you a result of rational number so here all are rational numbers and we know that root 15 is not a rational number we all know that so you'll write this much only step there is no requirement to prove root 15 irrational in a separate copy it's not required at all and let me tell you i am telling this answer keeping in mind a four marker question so this is a complete solution for a four marker question you will get 100 percent marks i am guaranteeing you being a teacher i can say that okay so you will write root 3 plus root 5 is not rational number our assumption was wrong and hence this root 3 plus root 5 is an irrational number did you all get this question i guess you would have got this because it's an easy one but still i am giving you all the steps what you should write in the board examinations not much more not much less because your time is very precious so don't make it very lengthy it's not required even okay so and let me tell you all those questions which i am giving and uh, giving it's not important that board will ask the very same with the all same values yeah board can write down here root 5 plus root 7 or root 5 minus root 3 or something like this means the values can change but the type of question is most likely the same it would be same